information for you. And I'm not sure how much you can take in on a Friday night. <laughs> Esta tarde tengo mucha información para vosotras y no sé cuánto podéis asumir un viernes por la tarde. And um, so I will uh, go through, I have different um, videos and some stories and some research findings that I will share with you that are all about um, bringing contemplative science to school, but mostly about educating the heart. Tengo conmigo varios vídeos, historias, resultados de investigación. Todos ten, tienen que ver con traer la ciencia contemplativa a la escuela y sobre todo sobre educar el corazón. Um, I also want to thank um, all of my collaborators. I won't read out all of their names, but just so you know that the work I'm going to be talking about and the research is all done um, in, as a family, really, I think Carlos could speak to that. Uh, all of the people with whom I work, both my uh, students as well as my faculty collaborators, we are a family that helps um, build a better world for children. También me gustaría dar las gracias a todos mis colaboradores. No voy a leer todos sus nombres, pero quiero que sepáis que toda la investigación y todo el trabajo que hacemos, lo hacemos como una familia. Creo que Carlos puede afirmar esto, que tanto los estudiantes como los profesores, todos trabajamos juntos para ayudar a hacer el mundo mejor para los niños. So, the outline, and, and actually Maggie, you could just read these slides. Um, basically, I'm going to talk about a background and give a story, talk about why now do we need to think about contemplative science or educating the heart, what now, what are some recent scientific findings, what is the research telling us, um, talk about social and emotional learning and mindfulness, bringing those two together. I'm going to talk about an example of one program in particular called Mind Up. And I have the manual here if people want to look at it later. Um, some research findings on MindUp. Talk a bit about the facilitators and barriers to bringing uh, contemplative science to, to schools. And then finally, I'm going to give you a glimpse of some future directions. Para dar un guión de la conferencia, voy a empezar con un cierto telón de fondo y una historia. También pregunto, ¿por qué ahora? Y luego, ¿qué ahora? Que, y, y presentar la noción de aprendizaje socioemocional. Luego presentaré algunos hallazgos científicos sobre uh, el aprendizaje socioemocional y uh, mirar algunas intervenciones educativas en ese sentido. Uh, luego daré un ejemplo, que es el programa Mind Up, del que tengo aquí el manual, lo podéis mirar si queréis. Uh, y, y luego daré algunos hallazgos también de investigación sobre MindUp. Y luego miraremos algunas de las barreras y algunas de las cosas que, que facilitan que llevamos las ciencias contemplativas a los colegios y nos plantearemos las direcciones futuras. Um, I already translated this. Is that the right translation? Okay. So, um, Basically, um, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Um, I would like to know, does anyone know who said that? ¿Quién, alguien, ¿Alguien sabe quién ha dicho esa cita, esa frase? I don't know, but I suppose it's Dalai Lama. It could be the Dalai Lama, but it's not. Podría <laughs> ser, pero no lo es. Aristotle? Yes! <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> yes, Aristotle. And so this idea of educating the heart along with educating the mind is not so new. But the science, the recent science, is really telling this is true. Entonces, el idea de educar el corazón no es nada nuevo, pero la ciencia que nos eh, es muy reciente que nos indica que eso es una verdad. So now I'm going to tell you a story about a program called The Roots of Empathy. It's a program that and Maggie just tell me if I'm going too much, okay. Um, it's a program that goes into schools 
and the teacher is a baby. So every, uh, every month, across an entire school year, a baby who is very small in the beginning and a caregiver visit the class every month across nine months. And the baby serves as a springboard for talking about how we feel and how we care about others. Voy a contar una historia de un programa que se llama Las raíces de la empatía. Es un programa que, lleva a, que va a los colegios, que va a centros educativos y el profesor, el maestro, es un bebé. Cada mes, a lo largo de todo el curso escolar, el bebé y un cuidador visita el aula y el bebé sirve como un punto de partida para toda una conversación sobre los sentimientos, las emociones y, y cómo cuidar. So, um, the program began in Canada, and now it's in eight different countries in which the baby is a teacher. And now I'm going to tell you a story that is actually from a book called The Roots of Empathy, Changing the World, Child by Child, by Mary Gordon. Este programa empezó en Canadá, ahora se ha extendido a ocho países en los que el bebé sirve como maestro y voy a contar una historia que aparece en un libro que se llama Raíces de la empatía escrita por Mary Gordon. Um, so to understand the story, you have to know what a snuggly is. Para entender la historia hay que saber lo que es un snuggly. How do you say snuggly in mm, un portabebé? You all know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, because I don't speak Spanish, I had someone I know and love uh, who speaks Spanish, uh, Angela Jeremillo, who some people here know, um, tell this story, and it's from the book. Como no hablo en eh, castellano yo, he pedido a una amiga, que algunos aquí conocéis, a uh, que cuente la historia del libro en castellano. And it's a story of children in a Roots of Empathy classroom in particular about one student named Darren. Es una historia de unos niños en un aula de raíces de empatía y en concreto de un alumno que se llama Darren. Darren era el niño con más años que había visto alguna vez en una clase del programa de Roots of Empathy. Estaba en octavo grado y había tenido que repetir dos años anteriormente. Era dos años mayor que los otros compañeros de clase y ya incluso le estaba empezando a salir barba. Conocía su historia. Su madre había sido asesinada en su presencia cuando él tenía cuatro años y desde ese momento había vivido en varios hogares de opción. Darren se mostraba amenazante porque quería dejarnos saber que él era fuerte. Tenía toda su cabeza rapada, excepto por una cola de caballo que llevaba en la parte posterior de esta, donde además llevaba un tatuaje. Ese día, la instructora del programa de Roots of Empathy estaba hablando acerca de temperamento y sus diferencias. Ella invitó a la madre de Evan, el bebé de seis meses del programa de Roots of Empathy, a que les compartiera a los estudiantes su opinión con respecto al temperamento de su bebé. La madre de Evan compartió con los estudiantes cómo a este le gustaba mirar hacia afuera cuando lo ponía en el cargador, en lugar de mirar hacia adentro, como abrazándola. Ella hubiera preferido que a su bebé le hubieran gustado más los abrazos. Al finalizar la clase, la madre de Evan le preguntó a los estudiantes si estarían interesados en ponerse el cargador del bebé, el cual tenía líneas verdes con brocado rosado. Para sorpresa de todos, Darren dijo que estaba interesado en ponerse. De esta manera, mientras los otros estudiantes se alistaban para salir a almorzar, él se abrochaba el cargador. Minutos después, Darren preguntó si podía poner al bebé en el cargador. La madre estaba un poco ansiosa pero cargó a su bebé y se lo dio en los brazos a Darren, quien a su vez lo puso en el cargador mirando hacia él. Este sabio bebé se abrazó a Darren y este lo llevó a una esquina muy tranquila al salón de clase, donde empezó a mecerlo de un lado para otro por unos cuantos minutos. Después de un rato, Darren volvió a donde estaba la madre del bebé y la instructora del programa de Roots of Empathy y les preguntó, si nadie nunca te ha amado, ¿pensarían que puede uno llegar a ser buen padre? So, um, that's the power of what happens when you bring 
the discussion of emotions to a classroom where children have an opportunity to talk about how they feel and about their wishes and fears for the future. Este es el poder de lo que ocurre cuando hay un espacio para hablar de las emociones en un aula, donde los alumnos tienen la oportunidad de hablar de, de, y hacer sus preguntas al respecto. And here the question is, we have research data now showing, evaluating the program, does it actually make children more empathic? And as you can see here in a graph, the green bars mean uh, the roots of empathy children. The white bars are children who were in the control group who did not get roots of empathy. It cho shows changes over the school year. And essentially, you see here that children who had the roots of empathy program increased in how much they shared with others, how cooperative they were, how much they helped, how kind they were, how much they were able to take someone else's view and how often they were seen as being fair. Aquí tenemos unos datos de investigación. ¿Es verdad que este programa hace que los niños sean más empáticos? Puedes ver que las barras en verde son los niños que participaron en Raíces en la Empatía y los de blanco son los que no participaron. Se ve a lo largo del cambio, a lo largo del curso escolar, uh, los que participaron aumentan su tendencia a compartir, a cooperar, a ayudar, a ser amables, a, a tener en cuenta la posición de otros y en general de colaborar. So some of the key messages I want to share with you um, as teachers, as educators, I think that what we need to do is find something we like in every single child, even those children who make it difficult. And second, to lead with compassion. El mensaje clave para nosotros como profesores es Encontrar algo que nos gusta en cada niño y liderar con empatía y compasión. This is just educating heart and mind in school. And that's what I'll be talking about. Corazón y la mente en la escuela. Now I'm going to show a video that is from the Dalai Lama Center for Peace and Education in Canada, in Vancouver. Um, I work closely with them. And the video is actually subtitled in Spanish. Este es un video del Centro del Dalai Lama por la Paz y la Educación en Canadá. Yo trabajo uh, muy codo a codo con ellos. Afortunadamente, el video tiene subtitulado en castellano. When a child is born, we do everything we can to protect them, nurture them, love them. A child's heart and mind are fragile. As they grow, we want to teach them everything we know. We send them to school to fill their minds with wonderful knowledge, to give them the tools they need for life. At school, they get a taste of what things are like in the world outside. There is friendship, romance, disappointment, embarrassment, discrimination, and bullying. But are the tools we give them enough to prepare them for this world? We have an enormous responsibility and an amazing opportunity. If we truly want to prepare them for the world outside, we must also educate the heart. Because to navigate the world outside with compassion, acceptance, and tolerance, we need to teach them compassion, acceptance, and tolerance. This can begin in our schools and it can start today. It can happen at hockey practice, dance class, at day camps and music lessons. And it's already happening around the world with astonishing results. If we want our children to grow into socially and emotionally capable young people, we must ask for a balanced education that puts importance on educating both the mind and the heart.
The video is on the Dalai Lama Center for Peace and Education website, if you want to uh, see it. Um, I like the video because it communicates so much information about how important we need to um, give to educating the heart of children. And I believe it represents a movement that we're seeing now in education across the world, that we need to teach children and have schools be a place where we not only promote their academic work and their understanding of reading and math and social studies, but one in which we also promote positive human qualities such as empathy, compassion, and resiliency. Este video está en la página web del Centro del Dalai Lama de, por la Paz y la Educación. A, a mí me gusta porque da mucha información sobre la importancia de educar el corazón en los niños. Y yo creo que representa un movimiento a lo largo y ancho del mundo donde los, eh, los colegios se están dando cuenta que tienen no solo que encargarse de la formación académica en matemáticas y lectura de los niños, sino también en fomentar las características positivas humanas. Also, um, why this is so critical, as we move forward in the world, we really have to think about how we not only teach creativity and help promote intelligence, but also compassion. And I believe that Desmond Tutu's quote um, really rings true, where he said, educating the mind without educating the heart has produced brilliant scientists who used their intelligence for evil. And at that time, he was talking about um, the doctors during the Holocaust, Mengel and others who performed uh, horrific experiments on humans. And I think we could think today of other very brilliant people who have done a lot of harm in the world. Um, if we even think about 9-11 uh, in the U United States with the, um, the people who flew the planes into the World Trade Center. And so now we really have to think that this combination in education is essential. Es importantísimo, según vamos avanzando en la sociedad, poder enseñar no solo creatividad y inteligencia, sino también la compasión. Y aquí creo que la cita de Desmond Tutu es más verdadero que nunca, que educar la mente sin educar el corazón ha producido científicos brillantes que han utilizado su inteligencia para el mal. Y él en este momento hablaba del Mengel y otros doctores en el, en el holocausto que hicieron experimentos sobre seres humanos, pero también podemos mirar otros tantos, otras tantas personas brillantes que han utilizado su inteligencia para, hacer, para dañar, como incluso los pilotos que piloteaban los aviones en el, el 11S en Estados Unidos. Entonces, es importante mirar esa combinación de inteligencia y, y, y uh, complementarlo con compasión. So why now? ¿Por qué ahora? <laughs> We know children today are experiencing new changes and challenges in our world of technology, um, of changing demographics, of increased stress for parents, for families, for society. Sabemos que los niños de hoy uh, se enfrentan a nuevos desafíos ante la tecnología, cambios demográficos, tiempos de mucho estrés, tanto para a sus progenitores como para las familias. So, there's something called toxic stress. So, everyone experiences stress, but there's toxic stress that actually interferes with learning. That if you have too much stress, you, you have something increases in something called cortisol, um, which is a stress hormone, which actually could do damage to the prefrontal cortex, which is um, part of the brain that is responsible for attention and working memory. Children who have a lot of stress then can actually look like they have attention deficit disorder when in fact they don't. And as you see here, um, that there's different things. Early stress may impair the development of self-regulation. It interferes with learning over time may cause learning and behavior problems, especially for children at risk or in poverty, 
and we do know adult support may be protective. Hay algo que se llama estrés tóxico. Que, que interviene en el aprendizaje, que todos tenemos estrés, pero hay un nivel de estrés que se considera tóxico, que produce cortisol, que es una suerte de eh, una hormona eh, que, que daña el anticorte eh, frontal eh, y altera la capacidad de atención y de memoria. Los niños que sufren estrés pueden acabar diagnosticados con uh, déficit de atención, pero en verdad esa no es su situación, sino que es el estrés que interviene en su capacidad de autorregularse, de aprender, de generar comportamientos problemáticos, etc. Sobre todo en situaciones de marginación o de precariedad. And we now know that stress is contagious. That recent research is telling us that even if you're not stressed, but you're around a bunch of people who are stressed, you will actually have the negative effects of that stress. Ahora sabemos que el estrés es contagioso, que la proximidad a otras personas que estén en situaciones de mucho estrés puede producir sobre uno las consecuencias negativas de este estrés. And some recent research today is telling us that children today are less empathic and more self-absorbed than in previous generations. Hay investigaciones recientes nos enseñan que los niños de hoy son menos empáticos y más uh, ab absortos en sí mismo que en otras generaciones. One study followed over uh, high college students from 1979 to 2000 and found that there was a significant decrease in empathy especially since the year 2000. Una investigación reciente ha seguido universitarios desde el año 79 hasta 2009 y ha demostrado que hay mucha menos capacidad de empatía en, a lo largo de los años, sobre todo en los alumnos a partir del año 2000. So some reasons for the empathy decline, it could be increased screen time, like using your phone, texting. Do I need to, do, well, I, I was going to say, does anyone ever see kids who are sitting next to each other texting without actually looking to the person? Um, information overload, there's too much uh, things going on in the world and they hear about all the negative things and it's too much, so they shut down. The absence of empathic role models, who are the role models of children today, and maybe violence exposure, both around the world, but even things like video, violent video games. Um, do children here play violent video games? I imagine yes. Los motivos por ese declive de empatía. Uno, más tiempo de pantalla y de medios sociales que pregunta si vemos aquí algunas veces niños sentados uno al lado de otro, cada uno con su pantalla, pero sin mirarse el uno al otro. También un exceso de información, un sobredosis de información que les llega y, y para protegerse se, se apagan. También una ausencia de, de modelos de comportamiento empático y también, cuarto, eh, estar expuestos a niveles de violencia en, en todo el mundo por muchas situaciones, pero también por, uh, por ejemplo, videojuegos violentos, programas de televisión violentos y preguntas si aquí los niños juegan también uh, uh, videojuegos violentos. So what now? Ahora qué? We're moving from focusing on just reducing ill being to promoting well-being. Estamos ahora cambiando el enfoque de un intento de evitar el malestar hacia promover el bienestar. We're using research from the science of resiliency, learning how children can be resilient in the face of risk. Estamos haciendo uso de investigaciones sobre la ciencia de la resiliencia y buscando cómo los niños pueden aprender resiliencia. This is going to take a few minutes. Oh, so, if you think of a life preserver, we often do intervention. We wait till children have fallen into the water 
and we throw them a life preserver to bring them back up. We're now moving to doing prevention, to give them the life preserver, the life jacket, so that they have all the tools they need so that if they face risk, they can stay afloat. Si piensas en una salvavidas, antes reaccionábamos a, tirando a los niños, al niño que se hundía, le tirábamos una salvavidas. Pero ahora estamos cambiando el enfoque hacia la prevención, a, dando, intentando dotar cada niño con las herramientas que necesita para enfrentarse en el momento que se encuentra con una situación de riesgo. I like to think of this as now preparing children for social and emotional fitness. Do you all know that physical fitness is important? I think that in the same way we know physical fitness is important, we are now at a point in our understanding that social and emotional fitness is as important, that we need to prepare children in the same way um, to be socially and emotionally fit. A mí me gusta pensarlo como el fitness socioemocional. Se entiende que estar en forma físicamente es importante para los niños, pues es igual de importante que estén en forma de socioemocional y prepararles para estarlo. There is a book written in 1995 by Daniel Goleman um, called Emotional Intelligence. How many of you have heard that book? Heard of that book? Este es un libro que se escribió en 1995 de Daniel Goldman. ¿A cuántos conocéis este libro? And it was Dan Goldman who really showed us that IQ was not as important as we thought and said that analytical intelligence, IQ, accounts for only 10 to 15 percent of job success and other real world outcomes que era él el que nos enseñó que el, el cociente de inteligencia no es tan importante como antes se había pensado y que realmente solo la inteligencia analítica solo representa un 10% a 15% del éxito laboral y otros resultados en, la, en el mundo real. So what's happened, and since Dan Goleman wrote that book, there's been a movement happening across the world called social and emotional learning. And this movement is now being implemented in many countries and in many schools that are bringing in programs and different practices that educate the mind as well as the heart. De allí surge un movimiento por todo el mundo de aprendizaje socioemocional que está implementando en muchos países, en muchos lugares, programas y prácticas para fomentar esa inteligencia socioemocional. En British Columbia, Canadá, donde vivo, ahora hemos just entered legislation. The policymakers in education have now instituted K-12 social and emotional learning across the entire province. En uh, British Columbia, en Canadá, uh, se acaba de legislar de forma obligatoria desde infantil hasta uh, a bachillerato una formación socioemocional en todos los niveles por toda la provincia. This is just the five dimensions of social and emotional learning from CASEL, or the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning. It includes self-awareness and self-management, social awareness and relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. Estos son lo que consideramos los cinco dimensiones de la, del aprendizaje socioemocional, que empieza con eh, la conciencia de uno mismo, eh, la gestión de uno mismo, o regulación de uno mismo, eh, la conciencia social y las herramientas eh, de relación. So I'm going to show a video, but I realize the sound is not connected. You're just hearing it from my computer. So I wonder if I should just use my um, microphone? What do you think? Que va a conectar un video, pero pregunta por el sonido. Oh, OK. Yeah, it was
hosted on MySpace by one of those people, which is how this is huh? This assault occurred in North Babylon, New York. The victim, apparently just 12 years old, her attackers are 14 year old ninth graders. A student with a gun at the Sunset Academy. Okay, where's the student at? He was picked on, bullied, and that may have been part of what pushed him to the school shooting here. Yesterday. While schools across the country grapple with the behavior problems of their troubled students, thousands of individuals are stepping up to help meet those students' social and emotional needs. And no matter what we teach your brains, love is more important than knowledge. One of them is Michael Pritchard, a comedian and former probation officer who tours the country listening to the hearts of young people. How many of you know a boy or girl here at school who gets picked on and left out and never included and laughed at all the time? Raise your hands high, high. Look around the room, please. Hands down. At one point, Michael asks kids to come forward and share how they've been hurt or maybe to apologize to others. And when he asked them to do that, I thought, they're not going to do this. They're, I mean, in front of all these kids, they're not going to come forward. I have to tell you, I was amazed at how free they were to come forward and really share their experience. When I first moved here a year ago, no one really wanted to play with me, and all the fifth graders called me names. What was it doing to your heart? It just made me feel really bad. We get sick if we try to hold all that pain in. And then the unaddressed grief turns to anger and the anger to rage. And it has two directions, out to the community or inwards towards the self and self-destructiveness. My main thing that's gotten me through all this is empathy. I, when they, I was being bullied, I tried to feel how they were feeling and that's why they were, um, and why they were bullying me. Creating an environment in which kids feel comfortable, in which they are productive, in which they treat one another well, is not a one-shot thing. So our responsibility as adults that work with kids is to reiterate that lesson. And it's been my experience, it takes three to five years to really change a school culture, and it's a learning process. What people say to us and how other people treat us kind of shapes what we think about ourselves. And I want to share with you a story one day, Maria woke up. With curriculum material from programs like Resolving Conflict Creatively, students can learn social-emotional skills in any classroom. And her sister came in to the room and said, are you going to wear those old rags to school? We are talking about a whole new vision of education that says that educating the heart is as important as educating the mind. And so it's about equipping young people with the kinds of skills they need to both identify and manage their emotions, to communicate those emotions effectively, and to resolve conflict nonviolently. So that was Maria's day. How do you think Maria's feeling now, if this is what's left of her heart? Emotional intelligence, which refers to how you handle your own feelings, how well you empathize and get along with other people, is just a key human skill. But it also turns out that kids who are better able to manage their emotions, for example, actually can pay attention better, can take in information better, can remember better. In other words, it helps you learn better. Let's say if me and Gabriella had a problem, then we're going to go inside the peace corner and express our feelings with a peace helper. And I think everybody knows what a peace helper is. At PS24 in Brooklyn, students learn to take an active role in solving classroom disputes. So you had a book first and a girl snatched it from you? Yeah. How do you feel? I feel mad. I like doing it because I like helping other kids. And it's very fun for me because I get to have fun and then be serious at the same time. Do you need my help? Yeah. What happened? When I do stuff like the mini lesson, I have to stay focused, and especially when I'm working like with first graders or kindergartners. When the peace helpers were helping solve the conflict, what did you see the peace helpers do? I'm still learning, because if I go to sixth grade next year, I need to learn how to control my anger, because I have a serious temper problem. 
Running game and having game is pressuring somebody. Because you're trying to slick them, right? In 1990, New Haven, Connecticut pioneered a comprehensive district-wide approach to teaching social-emotional skills. Focus in on your dot, nothing else. Deep breath. In our middle schools and high schools, the social development curriculum is taught as a separate class. A student might go to English first period and social development second period and chemistry third period. So the student is taking the skills that he or she is learning in that second period social development class and using those skills wherever else in his or her life is needed. One possible solution is saying no or walking away. Is that real? Just like you take the reading skills that you learn in fourth period class and apply them throughout your life, it doesn't matter if other people in your life have the same reading skills or not. You have the skills. If you've been hurt by someone saying or doing something mean or thoughtless, move into the circle. The success of New Haven's efforts inspired other districts, like Anchorage, Alaska, to take on ambitious programs. Falling. Fall away. <laughs> This day-long series of games, trust exercises and truth-telling sessions called Change of Heart is designed to forge a caring community from the diverse group of 2,400 students and staff at East Anchorage High School. Yes, I trust you guys. It's just part of a concerted effort to address the social and emotional needs of every student in the district, an effort that began with schools in turmoil just a few years ago. You know, you hear those horror stories about like, you know, like thugs showing up at school and like you having to look at behind your shoulder and that's how it was. There was a lockdown at lunch. Alaska, unfortunately, has the highest rate of domestic violence, sexual and child abuse in the nation per capita. And so a lot of our kids, they're watching violence in their homes. Sometimes they're the ones being attacked and abused. And for them to be able to come into school, which is frankly, for many of them, their safe haven, and to automatically switch that off and say, oh yes, I'm gonna really focus on algebra, it isn't even realistic. And so we've got a lot of young people in very great distress. After nearly a decade of studying best practices from around the country, the district adopted comprehensive social and emotional standards with concrete benchmarks for appropriate behavior at every grade level. They designed classes to teach specific skills and developed guidelines for assessment. I am a curriculum coordinator. So I am seen in the same office as the language arts coordinator, the math coordinator, the health coordinator, etc. to show just visually, politically, everything else that we are going to value this like we value any of our other curriculum. A lot of my job is to look at the already adopted curriculum and say, okay, here's a place where if I was teaching this reading lesson, I could also hit this social emotional learning standard at the same time. Two roads diverged in a wooden eye. I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. What do you think he's saying there? I think that he took the one that not everybody was doing, like maybe everybody was doing a different thing and he thought that it was wrong so he did the other thing and maybe he was right. It doesn't have to be right or wrong, just follow your heart, be true to yourself. So Mike has eight dollars. Is this Mike? In this fifth grade math class, solving problems is a social activity. Mike started with eight. Kelly had twice as much as Mike, and Joe had half as much as Kelly, which is... Awesome. Every teacher out there has probably said at some point in time, turn to your neighbor and talk about this idea. Look at your teammates and talk about this idea. Why did you do those shapes there? Because it looked cool. <laughs> <laughs> and well, really watch, okay, if they are talking about the topic that you've asked them to talk about, if they're actually listening to each other and using that language and those social skills, then all of a sudden you have an environment where 30 kids are all learning at the same time. Thank you. Today, Lucia intentionally bumps into Jackson in the lunchroom and makes him spill his food. The Aggressors, Victims, and Bystanders, or AVB, curriculum has been adopted by all of the middle schools in the district. What are some of the cool-headed thoughts he could have? Uh, he might think that she likes him and that's why she's being so mean to him. Exactly, I hate to say it, but sometimes at middle school, kids do some really weird things to the kids they like. Today you're going to be interviewing one person, and that one person is also going to be interviewing you. Freshman English teacher Trudy Keller incorporates social-emotional learning standards in her daily lessons. Scrutinize is a word that'll be on your next quiz. I want you to really scrutinize them and think about 
your impressions beyond just what they say. One of the students wrote about his partner that he interviewed because this student's parent was a drug addict and actually caused a great deal of turmoil in the family and was actually a student that he had sort of looked down on, I think, before. And at the end he wrote, I have a great deal of respect for what this student has been through. Do you have a, a job or what's your home? Well, I have a disabled brother and I usually take care of him and stuff. I just think that you need to be in touch with their feelings, their emotions. When I know what's going on and I acknowledge that and we deal with it, then we can get on to the job of learning. Two, three. The world is full of all kinds of people inside our blood flows the same. We're all under the gun to improve our test results, the academics. But I tell you what, it's a whole lot more fun <laughs> to start focusing on, on that connection with kids and helping people feel good about where they are. The other will follow. Our teachers, I think, are much happier. They like their kids. Good job, kiddo. Excellent. Practice being cool-headed this weekend. Since my freshman year, the amount of suspensions that have happened at East have gone down dramatically. The amount of fights has gone down dramatically. East as a whole is so much better than before. The goal is to hit the ball in the air as many times. The advantage of spending time doing this is the payoff in academics. There's research out now that shows that kids involved in intentional social emotional learning programs like we're trying to do right here scored on average 10% higher on their standardized tests. So what are we giving up? We're giving up, you know, higher referrals. We're giving up violence in our schools. What are we getting? Kids who come to school because they want to come to school. And kids who know how to act when they get into the schools. And hopefully kids who will go into their futures with a better chance at success. How should we treat each other? Uh, very well, because if we treat each other really bad, we won't, like, get along or be friends or, like, be part of a big family. You know what? You go home and you tell your mom, look at me. You have por razón, amigo. Yo te amo. Gracias. I love you. All right, por nada. Okay. For more information on what works in public education, go to edutopia.org. this forward. I thought showing that video would be easier for you to understand about social and emotional learning and also to let you know that that is on the web that you also can go and find this video um, on Edutopia. Um, Edutopia is a great resource. It was started by this guy named George Lucas. Has anyone ever heard of George Lucas? Me pareció que enseñaros el vídeo uh, haría mucho para presentar qué es, a qué, a qué nos referimos cuando hablamos de aprendizaje socioemocional. También se puede encontrar en la página web que es edutopia.org. Uh, es una, un gran recurso y fue fundado por un tal George Lucas. ¿Os suena? So, um, just given the time, I'm going to go through a couple of things quickly and scoot through some of my slides. Um, I was going to ask, is there a way to make my slides available? ¿Se puede hacer público los diapositivos? Compartirlos. Yeah, I could give them, yeah. yeah, just so that you would have that. But um, just to tell you that there's three things when we talk about social and emotional learning that you need to know about. One is to create the compassionate classroom and school environment, where, uh, as you saw in the video, um, it's about how we treat each other, how we work together. The second piece is teachers' own well-being. And what the science is now telling us that, guess what? How teachers understand their own emotions and manage stress and their own well-being influences how they teach. And third, we need to have direct ways to reach the students by teaching them these explicit skills. Que hay tres cosas que hay que entender cuando hablamos de aprendizaje socioemocional. Uno, 
crear mmm, aulas o entornos en el colegio de compasión, cómo trabajamos juntos, cómo nos tratamos entre nosotros. Segundo, el bienestar emocional de los profesores. La ciencia ahora nos demuestra que ay, cómo el propio profesor entiende y gestiona sus propias emociones tiene mucho que ver, o sea, tiene un impacto muy importante sobre los alumnos en el aula. Y tercero, formas más explícitas, más directas de llegar al alumnado con estas habilidades y destrezas emocionales. I'm gonna, this is just what I was saying, that we need to care for teachers. Como decía, tenemos que cuidar de los profesores. So if you've ever been on an airplane, you know that you first have to put the oxygen mask on the adult and then you put it on the child. So think of that for teachers. Si habéis viajado alguna vez en avión, se sabe que hay que poner la máscara de oxígeno primero al adulto y luego ayudar al niño que acompaña. Así pensar en esto para la educación socioemocional. I'm, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but no just, voy a pasar todo yeah. esto. But just to think about teachers, what happens is they can get burnt out with so many things happening to them. They have emotional exhaustion, then they depersonalize the children, and then they feel a lack of accomplishment. In the United States, 50% of teachers leave within the first five years of teaching. Pensando en el cuidado de los profesores, es muy fácil que los profesores se quemen, que no puedan gestionar sus emociones con todo lo que les llega en el aula, acaban despersonalizando al alumnado y luego sientan una falta, una carencia de, de logros o de, de uh, éxitos en, en el aula. Tenemos en cuenta que en Estados Unidos 50% del profesorado deja de la enseñanza después de cinco años. So now I'm just going to give you a couple of the findings from recent research and go through this quickly and then talk about what I see as one of the ways we can really do this by bringing mindfulness to schools. Voy a contar muy breve algunos hallazgos de investigación reciente y contar algunas de las formas que podemos intervenir en esto con el mindfulness. So the first finding um, that's from a research study that just came out last year is that children who have empathy early on in development are more likely to grow to be successful adults. Un hallazgo de una investigación del año pasado demuestra que los niños que tienen empatía en una edad muy temprana suelen tener más éxito más adelante en la vida. I'll just go through this. So, one of the research findings found that children in kindergarten who had high empathy or pro-social skills were more likely, they, they followed them 13 to 17 years later, more likely to graduate from high school earn a college degree and obtain a full-time job, whereas children who had low pro-social skills or empathy were more likely to have spent time in juvenile detention, been arrested by early adulthood. Se demuestra que eh, a nivel de escuela infantil, los niños que demuestren empatía en estos años, si los seguimos a 13 o a 17 años más adelante, es más probable que hayan graduado de, de la secundaria, graduado de la universidad y tendrían un trabajo. Uh, sin embargo, los niños con pocas habilidades de empatía en esa edad temprana uh, resultan mucho, con mucho más frecuencia detenidos, eh, fracaso escolar y en situaciones de precariedad. We also know, finding number two, that these skills can be taught, that they're malleable, that you can teach empathy and compassion and self-control. La, el segundo hallazgo es que estas cosas sí que se pueden enseñar. Se puede enseñar la empatía, la compasión y la, el autocontrol. Just neuroplasticity. <laughs> neuroplasticidad. Yes. Um, we know, for instance, from research that says especially self-control or self-regulation predicts long-term adult outcomes. Se sabe que la capacidad de regularse a uno mismo 
y en la infancia es un buen predictor de salud, bienestar y, y éxito en la edad adulta. The other finding, and this is one of my favorites, is that we actually have underestimated children's capacity for empathy. Uno de, eh, otro hallazgo, y ese es uno de mis favoritos, es que hasta ahora hemos menospreciado la capacidad que tienen los niños de empatía y amabilidad. And Dr. Keltner, who is a researcher at the at, um, University of California, Berkeley, he actually says it's not survival of the fittest, it's survival of the kindest. And that the reason that we have survived as a species is because of our innate, compassionate nature. Un investigador en la Universidad de California de Berkeley, afirma, el Dasher, Dasher Keltner, afirma que no es una cuestión de supervivencia del más uh, hábil, sino el, la supervivencia del más amable, que como especie hemos sobrevivido y hemos evolucionado debido a nuestra empatía innata. Now, the Dalai Lama, I'll just have you uh, read it. Ay, según eh, Dalai Lama, es eh, fundamental que a la hora de educar la, los cerebros de nuestros niños, no dejamos de educar sus corazones. Un elemento clave que debe ser eh, el, eh, cultivar nuestra naturaleza compasional. So, some new research, um, actually this is about 10 years old, is showing us that even very young children, even 18-month-olds, can behave altruistically. And al altruism is defined as helping someone without any expectation of reward. Um, they did a study with chimpanzees, but I'm not going to show you videos, videos of the chimpanzees, but I'm going to show you some videos of the experiment with 18-month-olds that asked, will an 18-month-old actually help someone with no one no expectation, expectation of reward, even if they don't know that person. Investigación de hace unos 10 años demuestra que niños muy pequeños, incluso de 18 meses, puedan demostrar altruismo. Se define el altruismo como la, el deseo de ayudar sin expectativa de recompensa. Este estudio se realizó con chimpancés. No os voy a enseñar el vídeo de los chimpancés, sino un vídeo de bebés de 18 meses que sí que ayudan sin expectativa de ninguna recompensa. Okay. So, let's watch the videos and see what they learned. Vamos a ver el video, a ver lo que aprendían. This next one is my favorite. Este próximo es mi favorito. <laughs> What's so fascinating about this research is no one had ever thought of doing something like that before because you often characterize 18-month-olds as aggressive, self-centered, but think about what those young children could do. They had to think about another person's perspective. They had to think about what they needed to do they were much more sophisticated in their thinking that we might ever have imagined. Lo fascinante de esta investigación es que a nadie se le había ocurrido hacerlo antes, que siempre se supone que los niños de 18 meses son agresivos, son uh, centrados solo en sí mismos, pero piensa en lo que tenía que hacer este bebé para realizar estas acciones, tenía que pensar desde la perspectiva del otro, pensar qué podía hacer para ayudar, su pensamiento es muchísimo más sofisticado de lo que se imaginaba. Um, so one of the questions might be, was the child doing that because the adult was watching? They were getting rewarded somehow by being acknowledged by the adult. So they set up an experiment where the adult wasn't paying any attention, and they even put a fun toy for the child to see if they would still help without any expectation of reward. 
Entonces, la cuestión que, que queda es si el niño hacía esto porque el adulto estaba observando y de alguna forma reconocimiento, lo, reconociendo lo que hacía el bebé. Entonces, elaboraron otro experimento en el que el adulto no prestaba ninguna atención. Incluso pusieron un juguete eh, entretenido que el niño podía ver si realizaba la cosa. So it's so remarkable that these children still continue to help, even when the adult. Then they did a next experiment to find out what happens when you reward a child with a toy for helping. So they set up an experiment with three groups. One group of children who helped and then got a prize. One group of children who helped and got a thank you, a verbal thank you. And the other group of children who the The person say neutral. Lo asombroso es que el niño eh, sigue ayudando incluso si nadie le presta atención. Entonces, el siguiente experimento que realizaron es ¿qué, qué ocurre si hay un premio por ayudar? En donde se establecieron tres grupos, uno en el que por ayudar el niño recibe un premio, otro en el que por ayudar recibe un agradecimiento verbal y un tercero en el que por ayudar no tiene ninguna respuesta. So what happened? You might guess by the title if you could uh, understand it, extrinsic rewards undermined altruistic tendencies in 20 month olds. Que la, los premios extrínsecos hay, hay merman la tendencia altruística en niños de 20 meses. So this graph shows Higher bars mean more helping. The children who the adult said nothing helped the most. Lo interesante es que estas barras se ve que el más alto es el que más ayudaba y los los niños a los que los adultos no respondían a su ayuda seguían ayudando más. And the children who got the reward, they helped the least the next time. Y los que fueron premiados ayudaron menos en la siguiente ronda. And the children who got the praise were in the middle. Y los que les reconoció verbalmente, pues en medio. And so what does this mean for how we educate children who behave in a helpful way and suddenly we feel we have to like pay them for household chores? Entonces eso qué, qué nos indica sobre eh, la tendencia de los niños a ayudar y la sensación de que los tenemos que compensar de alguna manera por echar una mano, por ejemplo, con tareas domésticas. In fact, there is research that says that when children get paid for doing household chores, it actually um, undermines their caring behavior. Hay investigaciones que demuestran que cuando los niños reciben una recompensa, un, un pago, por ejemplo, por las tareas domésticas, merma su tendencia, su deseo de ayudar. So now I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to go, I'm not going to leave happiness with you, I'm going to scoot through happiness. <laughs> Voy a repasar la felicidad muy rápido. I just really like this one. Pero es que me encanta este <laughs> diapositivo. Um, Only to say that one way we know of how to promote ha happiness, or two ways, is to be kind to others and to practice mindfulness. Una de las formas que sabemos de, de fomentar la felicidad es ser amable con otros y, y practicar mindfulness. So now, um, in the last bit of this presentation, I'm going to talk about social and emotional learning and mindfulness together. En la última parte de esta presentación voy a hablar de aprendizaje socioemocional y mindfulness juntos. So just mindfulness defined is considered to be a state of being aware and attentive in the present moment. In addition, mindfulness has been described as a state of consciousness with the core characteristic of being open, 
receptive and non-judgmental. Para definir mindfulness se considera un estado de estar consciente y atento del momento presente. Además, mindfulness se describe como un estado de, con, de, de conciencia con la característica de apertura, receptividad y no juicio. Mindful o mindful. <laughs> la mente llena o consciente. And um, actually, I'm going to um, just talk briefly that many of us go through life on autopilot and we do things without being present and aware. Muchos pasamos la vida en autopiloto sin estar presente y consciente del momento. Um, this is, I was just going to point you to, there's um, actually a measure called the Mindful Attention Awareness Scale that is translated into Spanish. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, and it really looks at mindlessness and not mindfulness, just so you know. <laughs> que existe un, una encuesta que se llama la escala de atención y conciencia consciente, que existe traducido al castellano. So mindfulness, though, um, people often think that it's just about paying attention to your breath, but it's more than just breathing. Muchas personas lo entienden como un prestar atención a la respiración, pero es mucho más que solo respirar. So any activity almost can be done practicing mindfulness, washing the dishes, walking, being in nature, being present and aware. Casi cualquier actividad se puede hacer en un estado de conciencia, de mindfulness, uh, desde fregar los platos, andar, estar. So it could be either a natural, natural capacity, some of you, might just have a natural capacity of being higher in mindfulness with how much you're present aware, but we also know it's a skill that being, can be cultivated. Algunos quizás tenéis una capacidad natural, inherente, uh, una habilidad de estar presente en el momento, pero también sabemos que es algo que se puede cultivar, se puede educar. Um, and I'm not going to go through each of this, but just essentially there's now been over a decade of research examining mindfulness, mostly programs with adults, finding very positive findings, including changes in the brain. Ahora hay casi una década de investigación, sobre todo con adultos, que demuestra resultados muy positivos de la práctica de mindfulness, incluso cambios a nivel cerebral. So now I'm going to tell you about a mindfulness program. I'm going to skip through this. It just shows you how SEL and mindfulness align. Um, one thing that we've done in British Columbia is because social and emotional learning is so popular, we've been able to bring in mindfulness programs that are part of social and emotional learning. So it's the way to bring in the programs um, that you can use with all children. Que, uh, voy a repasar esto muy rápido, pero uh, para hablar de los programas de mindfulness en British Columbia, en Canadá, uh, donde el aprendizaje socioemocional ha tenido tanto uh, acogida, uh, hemos podido introducir programas de mindfulness en los colegios partiendo de esa lógica de aprendizaje socioemocional. So much of the research has focused on in the past few years is focusing on decreasing stress, increasing attention, and self-reports of mindfulness. There has been fewer studies looking at intrapersonal awareness, improving interpersonal relationships of how children get along with each other, and increasing things like empathy, kindness, and compassion. En los últimos años ha habido mucha investigación sobre cómo la práctica de mindfulness baja niveles de estrés y aumenta los niveles de atención, pero ha habido menos estudios sobre el impacto interpersonal y cómo este puede fomentar entre niños y jóvenes capacidades de empatía y amabilidad. Um, I'm just going to tell you a recent report came out that had looked at many studies of mindfulness uh, with children and found some positive effects, um, but still there's more research to be done. 
Aquí tengo los resultados de un informe reciente que, que recoge varios estudios con niños sobre uh, los impactos del mindfulness, pero queda mucha investigación por hacer. And I won't go through that. And then um, there is a program here in Madrid. Um, can you say it in? Uh... Hay un programa que existe aquí en Madrid que se llama Crecer Respirando. Yes, and Carlos is actually the one been doing this in many schools. And what was so uh, wonderful today is we were walking back to my hotel after lunch, and he ran into we ran into two of his students that had been in the program. Carlos está llevando a cabo este programa en varios colegios y fue maravilloso porque hoy volviendo a mi hotel después de comer, uh, él se topó en la calle con dos alumnos suyos. And he's doing his dissertation research on this. Y él está right. haciendo la investigación del doctorado sobre ese tema. So now I'm going to take a few minutes to tell you about one program that we've been doing research on at, at University of British Columbia called MindUp. Voy a tomar un par de momentos para explicar un programa concreto en el que estamos trabajando en British Columbia que se llama MindUp. It's um, for children 5 to 14 years of age. Es desde uh, tercero de infantil hasta el octavo, que es niños de, 15, de 5 a 14 años. It has a number of different lessons, um, 15 in all. It starts out by teaching children about their brain. So they learn about the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, the hippocampus, um, as a way to bring mindfulness into the classroom. Then they do mindful listening, mindful seeing, a number of different mindfulness activities, to then um, doing social awareness, things like practicing optimism, and then finally social action. Que en este programa eh, está compuesto de 15, al, 15 sesiones, 15 clases. Eh, empiezan con un estudio sobre el cerebro, sus partes, luego actividades de, de escucha, mindfulness, eh, escucha atenta, eh, vista atenta y varias actividades. De allí pasa a conciencia social, eh, la práctica del optimismo y de allí a implicación social. This is um, a group of children out in the garden in the back of their school doing the mindful attention activity, which they do three times a day. They call them brain breaks. Aquí una foto de los niños en el jardín en su colegio haciendo una práctica de atención uh, consciente que hacen tres veces al día. Lo llaman una pausa para el cerebro. And here, what they're doing They're in the garden with their eyes closed, doing mindful listening to listen to all of the sounds they can hear as part of a science project. Aquí están en el jardín con los ojos cerrados, haciendo una escucha atenta uh, como parte de una actividad de ciencias de conocimiento del medio para escuchar todos los sonidos que, que, que hay en el jardín. Um, so that's just a poster about the brain that's es, in the book. Ese es un cartel sobre el cerebro que está en su libro. Um, and there's a gratitude practice that children do where they pass a gratitude stone and they each say something for which they are grateful. Um, does anyone notice someone in this picture? Que esta es una práctica que hacen que se llama la práctica de gratitud, que van pasando una pequeña piedra, que es la piedra de gratitud, de uno a otro y cada uno dice algo por la que está agradecido. Y si veis alguna persona notable en este aula. Es el Dalai Lama. So he, um, so the Dalai Lama was in Vancouver. Um, for a visit, and we brought him to a classroom of the Mind Up program, and he sat in the circle with the children to practice gratitude. El Dalai Lama estaba en Vancouver de visita, y le invitamos al aula a, a participar en esa práctica de gratitud. Entonces él vino y se sentó con los niños y participó en esa actividad. But I forgot to say, I forgot what he said he was grateful for. Pero se me olvida lo que decía, su gratitud. So, mind up. <coughs> oh, sorry. Involves thinking, practicing, and doing for others. Mind up implica pensar, practicar, y hacer para los demás. And the question is, 
Does it work? Does bringing this kind of program into a school make a difference in children? Do they not only become less stressed and happier, but do they also become more kind? Y ahora la pregunta es, ¿eso tiene un impacto? No so, al traer una actividad como esta a un colegio, ayudamos no solo que bajen el nivel de estrés y aumenta la felicidad, sino que también que sean más amables entre sí. So we've done a few research studies, um, very rigorous ones in which we've had control groups, we've done a, an experimental study. Hemos hecho investigación muy científicamente riguroso con grupos de control. In this first study, what we found is children who received the Mind Up program significantly increased in their optimism compared to the control group. El primer resultado es que los niños que participaron en el programa de Mind Up aumentaron notablemente su optimismo relativo al grupo de control. They also, uh, according to teachers, how improved they became, they actually improved in how, uh, in their aggression, they improved uh, in being less oppositional, but they significantly increased in their ability to pay attention and to show social and emotional competence. Según los profesores, bajó la, agresi la agresividad, uh, la tendencia a ponerse en oposición y aumentó la capacidad de atención y de empatía con los demás. And in a second study, we collaborated with a neuroscientist, Dr. Adele Diamond, to see can you actually um, see that children experience changes in their brain. So we did computer tasks uh, for children. We also collected children's spit to look at cortisol, that stress hormone. And just so you know, the children like to give us their spit. <laughs> En un segundo estudio, eh, nos juntamos con una eh, neurocientífica a ver si realmente había cambios a nivel cerebral. Eh, les eh, pusimos a hacer tareas con el ordenador y también recogimos muestras de, de saliva eh, para probar el nivel de cortisol, esta eh, hormona de estrés, a ver si aparecía eh, la, la saliva, eh, que consta que a los niños les encantaba dar la saliva. <laughs> and so we would do things like uh, we present a, a presentation to the children and we say how much saliva do we make in one day and we'd say 1.5 liters and they'd go ew <laughs> Entonces lo presentamos, les preguntamos cuánta saliva crees que haces en un día y los mostramos que 1,5 litros y todos decían, ¡ay, qué asco! <laughs> so what we looked at is cortisol rhythm in children. And what we know from research is that your cortisol peaks about a half an hour after, uh, after, when you, uh, after awakening and then decreases the rest of the day. And it's lowest in the evening. Investigamos también el, el ritmo de cortisol. Sabemos por investigaciones varias que hay un pico de cortisol a media hora de despertarse por la mañana y luego va disminuyendo a lo largo del día. So what we found at the pretest, both the children who were in the mind up classrooms before they got the mind up program and the children in the control had the same type of healthy slope across the day. Vimos que tanto los niños en el grupo que participó en el programa MindUp como el grupo de control que no participó tenían un, un nivel de cambio, una tasa de cambio muy parecido a, a, al inicio de, del estudio. And what we found at the post test is that the children that received MindUp still had the healthy pattern of their cortisol, meaning really good stress regulation. However, the children in the control group became very um, flattened, representing more chronic stress. In el nivel, in, in, después de la, del experimento, uh, vemos que los niños que participaron en el MindUp mantienen esta uh, tasa de cambio, que es la sana y normal, mientras los del grupo de control se ve que aplana un poco el, el, la tasa de cambio uh, y que, que representa un nivel de estrés crónico. 
We also found, um, this is the computer task, that children that got the Mind Up program become, became much faster at being able to show attention and regulation. Uh, cuando miramos las tareas realizadas en ordenador, vemos que los niños que participaron en MindUp uh, eran más rápidos a la hora de fijar la atención y tener capacidad de respuesta. This next one is basically, it's a lot of data, but children who received MindUp became higher in empathy and things like emotional control and, and optimism. Aquí hay muchos datos, pero se ve básicamente que los niños que participaron en MindUp aumentaron su capacidad de empatía, de atención y de autocontrol. And this uh, graph basically shows that children who received MindUp also became kinder, more helpful and uh, more trustworthy. También se ve que los niños que participaron en MindUp uh, pasan a ser más amables, más uh, ayudar más y, y más de confiar. Oh, sorry, it's going too fast. Um, and this one, we looked at how much they gained, and one thing is we looked at their math scores. So we had their math grades on the report cards, and one of the things that we found was they had a 15% gain in math achievement in the mind up classroom compared to the children in the control. Miramos también sus notas en matemáticas uh, y vimos que aumentaron un 15% los resultados en, en capacidad matemática o en notas en, en matemáticas después de participar en el programa de mind up. Now, um, I want to end with what do the children say because I think you should never do a research study unless you also always ask the children what they think. Because the research can show it works out well, but if the children don't really like it, it's never going to work. Y ahora vamos a hablar de qué decían los niños de la experiencia, porque siempre que se hace una investigación hay que preguntar a los niños qué les parece, porque la investigación puede indicar una cosa, pero si los niños no les gusta, no va a funcionar. So, so one boy here said, um, he thought MindUp provided a calming period in some hectic days. Un chico de séptimo dijo que lo de MindUp uh, aportó un momento de calma en días ajetreados. If you look here, when we ask them what they like best about the program, you'll see that the majority of them said the mindfulness activities were their very favorite activity. Si vemos aquí uh, lo que sus respuestas a la experiencia de MindUp, a una mayoría afirman que las actividades de mindfulness era su parte favorita del día. Um, but I loved, we also had asked them what they didn't like, and I'm going to end here so we have a time for questions hopefully. Um, but I love this one student who said, grade, sixth grade, it seemed ridiculous how you could find a complete mental stillness in your mind, even how you couldn't, uh, how you could find a complete mental stillness in your mind even after weeks of practice. Aquí también admitimos las críticas que me encantó esa cita de un chico de sexto que decía que pareció absurdo cómo podías encontrar una quietud total mental uh, incluso después de semanas de practicar. So I think um, many adults who use mindfulness would say they themselves, after practicing for years, could not find the mental stillness. So even students find this challenge. Um, but overall, we have found very, uh, in other studies, finding very positive results as well as others have. However, more research needs to be done. Muchos adultos que practican mindfulness también dirían que incluso después de años de práctica no, no logran esa quietud mental. Uh, pero que vemos en general resultados muy positivos para esto, pero también hay mucha investigación todavía por hacer. Sí, y es tan maravilloso que Carlos esté aquí haciendo sobre mindfulness con los niños aquí en Madrid para ver cómo este programa funciona. Because I think that when you have data from your own children in your own community, that you have much more basis in which to spread it more widely. 
Y es maravilloso que Carlos esté aquí haciendo esta investigación sobre proyectos de mindfulness uh, porque me parece importante tener datos sobre los niños en tu propia comunidad para poder ir extendiendo este tipo de prácticas a partir de allí. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you.